a little bit about me. Uh, let me get used to scrolling down. Of course, I run EFL Talks. Um, I started off, I have my own business, Online Language Center, where I teach advanced level students. Uh, we have a new business language training institute where I just finished. Um, we started the Braz TESOL in Brazil, the Business English BSIG, and I'm president of that. We just had our kickoff about a month ago, and you'll be able to hear more about that in a little bit. And I'm also with the online team uh, with Sue <clears throat> on the IATEFL BSIG. And the new thing that we have that you'll be hearing more of in the future, if you've heard about the image conference, we have a new group called the Visual Arts Circle. And I'm the online coordinator, and we'll be doing some interviews later with that. So let's keep going. So basically, what is the problem today in English? I know, low pay. But in the teaching of English, the biggest problem is what we're finding is that teachers are not doing continued professional development and teacher development. And I know everybody's been talking about this. I've been talking about this for a couple of years now. And first of all, it's just not happening. And normally the question would be, why aren't you doing it? But I'm really preaching to the choir because you guys are doing it. You are here. And you are the guys that are really helping to keep this going with teacher development. So the question is, why aren't they doing it, all those people that aren't here? And if you could, in the chat box, give me some of the reasons that you think people are not doing teacher development these days. A few ideas. Afraid of technology, yep. Too busy, nice. They want to be paid for doing it, yes. Afraid, nice. No motivation, good. Okay, good, some great ideas. Untrained. All right, nice, okay. All right, here's the top 10 reasons excuses. The reasons. It's time. Everybody says, oh, there's not enough time in the day for me to do teacher development. Number two, excuse money. Um, a lot of these things that you go to these days are very expensive. I go to a lot of conferences all over the world, and um, they get very, very expensive. As the publishers are pulling back on the money that they support these conferences with, they're starting to charge more and more money. So money is a good argument. Permission. Now this is something I actually learned when I was in Malta, that um, in some countries you actually need to get permission from the government to take any continued education. And they have to give you approval because they have point systems that are added on to your teacher certificate. So this is something that was new to me. Distance, this is always a tough one. And here in Brazil, um, ah, very good, that's good to know, okay, thank you. And, you know, another problem is the distance. Brazil is a huge country, and I'm right here in Rio de Janeiro right now. Um, but it, depending on where the conference is, I normally I'm going to have to take an airplane to get anywhere. In Poland, uh, I have to take a train or fly. In big countries, distance is always a problem. Certification. Now, a lot of people think that if they're putting the time in that to get continued ed education, that they should get certification. And really, what I like about some of these programs that I've heard about is you're taking your time to sit here and learn something with this great Moodle MOOC. There ought to be some certification points that you get 
to add. Now, of course, I add these to my resume. Um, we need to find more ways to do this and give certification for the development that you're doing. Webinars and, you know, we have so many webinars now on the web. I remember back in the days when I got started and Nellie, you know, was even before me, there weren't very many webinars online. And the, it was easier because when you had a webinar on Friday, there was only one. Now what happens is everybody has a webinar every day. And there's just too many webinars. And of course, you know, I always write down, okay, at this moment I can see the Moodle and then later on I'm going to watch the recording of another webinar that went on. We all have good intentions, but what happens? You know, we forget. And some of these webinars, they go on for too long. Um, I've attended some that go on for two hours, some even longer with just one speaker, and it's too much. And then we always forget, oh, I forgot about the webinar on Friday, so I went to the beach instead. Oops. And then the best excuse is, huh? Okay, <laughs> I'm not killing it, I'm not killing it. So I look for a solution. And the idea with my solution came from a Facebook group that I had. And it's called English Students. And I started this um, about two years ago on Facebook. And this was for all the English students that were on Facebook and searched and said, oh, an English teacher, let me ask him questions. So I decided to start a group where people could start sharing things and where teachers like myself and like Nellie and some of the other people here could actually post to this group information that was helpful to students all over the world. And we're up, we're close to about 13,000 members right now. But what I noticed with this group is that 50% of them were future teachers. And they were studying in universities in Morocco and Tunisia and Turkey, just to name a few countries. And what I found out that 75% of them were from less advantaged countries. So what was happening is an English student group that I thought I was starting was actually teachers trying to improve their English. Okay. Um, yeah, they are. They're on what's up. Uh, so what I thought about is how can I build a PLN? And we all know personal learning network or professional learning network, depending on which way you go. Actually, it's short for Poland. Um, I thought about how I could start this and what I was going to do. And my idea was to get teachers teaching teachers. So, I thought of using top industry, industry together and build a PLO, PLN plus. And thinking about CPD, continuing professional development, what I wanted it to be was concise, I wanted it to be perpetual, and I wanted it to be dynamic. Yes, I know, Nelly. And you need a hook to everything. I don't know if you guys know the expression of hook. The idea of a hook is what's going to draw them in? What's going to be different about it? Because everybody has something to you know, help teachers learn. So I wanted something different. So I came up with the idea of 10 and 10. Good morning, Judy. So with 10 and 10, the idea was to use 10 slides and present your point in only 10 minutes. The idea was that you could get right to the point and it would be fast. Plus, we were going to record them, of course, like everybody records. But what I wanted was to build an archive of these recordings that was easy for teachers to go to any time. And I wanted it fun, free, 
I wanted something that was global, and I want this to be sustainable. I want this to keep going long after I'm gone, and something that we can pass on to teachers in the future. And did I mention I wanted it to be free? So what I did is I came up with 10 and 10 for 10. And some of the people here know what the last 10 stands for. Any idea what the last 10 stands for? Ten days? Mm -hmm. That's a little too much. It's ten hours. And what we did over the ten hours is I had 50 speakers. And I have to tell you that this was monumental putting this together. And without Nellie, I never could have pulled this off. Nellie and I must have talked every day for about six to eight hours in the weeks leading up to this, planning this out, coordinating 50 speakers from all over the world. Yes, we're going to do it again. We're going to talk later on. And I wanted this to be nonstop. So what we put together is EFL Talks for Teachers. And this was our first event, which was held on World Teachers Day. And God, it seems a lifetime ago. It was October 2015. And thanks to Nelly and Integrating Technology and our other sponsors, we had Gavin Dudney was a keynote speaker. We gave away free prizes. And we had a nonstop webathon with the 50 speakers that you see here from all over the world. And here's some of the subjects that we went over, just to give you an idea. And it's very varied. In the very beginning, what we did is we, I let everybody do whatever they wanted to do. And the idea was take what you're passionate about and talk about it in 10 minutes to give some help to the future teachers. And our next event, what we did was EFL Talks Answers. And what I did is we had 10 and 10 for you. And what we did here is we actually crowdsourced the questions from teachers on Facebook and with EFL Magazine. And we did this over two days. So we did five hours over Saturday and Sunday. And we had 40 questions. And we did question and answers. And yep, we still have a spot ready for you, Rosemary, whenever you're ready. And we, um, what we did is 10 and 10 for you. This took place uh, February. And we had Nick Peachy was our keynote. And of course, Nelly uh, helped out with the Moodle and integrating technology. Thank you again. I can't do it without her. And what we did is we had uh, basically 40 questions and we had 40 answers. So people sent in their questions and I found the right speaker to answer the question in 10 minutes. And yep, yeah, we gave out certificates and badges. And thanks to the Moodle for Teachers, we were able to do that. So it was a great addition. And here's some of the things that we talked about there. I know it's too fast. But we also did things like ebooks and education, uh, controversial issues, gamification, CLIL, all great subjects that came up. And since then, in December, I've been holding um, small regional live events. And I've cut back on the live events, and we'll talk about that now, but in a few minutes. But uh, no, I didn't abandon you. And um, we did EFL Talks Ecuador. Now, what I'm doing is uh, smaller, more centralized um, live events. For instance, this was done for Equitiesel. So what we had was a 10 and 10 for Ecuador, where we had all Ecuadorian speakers. And Vicky Samel was our guest speaker. Warm. One is Eddie's. And we did this um, just so we could concentrate and talk about the local things that were happening in Ecuador. 
The next one we did is my semi-home um, in Brazil. We did one for Braz Tiesel, and we're trying to bring up membership. And I don't know if you recognize this guy. Um, I don't know if I have a pointer. Mine shows a feather. We have Jeremy here was our keynote speaker. And we had a lot of people that were basically from the board of Braz Tiesel did a great job presenting. And we were talking 10 and 10 for Brazil. And what's happened is we're now up to a bunch of speakers. And some of you I know are here. Where's Judy? They're in alphabetical order. Judy, you're here somewhere. Yay, here's Judy. Okay. Um, we have the numbers. Let me show you first the names. We've got some huge names from all over the world in teaching. I'm sure you recognize a lot. A lot of them are here. I believe 12 of them are here on this meeting. And we're now up to 100, over 120 speakers in over 50 countries. And we have over 200 videos up right now. And the great news, we were nominated for an Elton's Award for Innovation and in Teacher Resources for 2016. And everything is available on our site, which is EFLTalks.com. Oops. And if you go to EFLTalks.com, what you'll see is all the recordings. And we've broken these up. I'm still working a good search engine here. But we have a variety of different talks. What you'll see is we, um, with Nelly, we used Ms. IQ. We saved and archived the recordings. So you'll see all the recordings with us in the corner. You'll see the PowerPoints and the chats. Yeah, there's music on the site. If you like the music, it's me. And we also have EFL Talks Live at Twitter. We usually, during the live events, we send out the Twitter feed. And what we do is we give out ebooks, we give out books, we have mentoring classes that we do giveaways, a lot of training, one to one sessions, and e courses. So our EFL talkers are great supporters and they love to give away free prizes. And the numbers, um, we've had over 750 live viewers, but uh, what we found is people are watching the recordings more. So this is one of the reasons that I've cut back from more of the live events and we're pre-recording everything now. So we've had over 200,000 viewers from over 200 countries, and we're almost up to a million views. So we're still growing. So we're taking over the world. <laughs> we're almost everywhere. And again, you can find everything on EFLtalks.com. Now, Thanks to Nelly, um, we started, we give out badges and we give out buttons for presenters. And also um, you get certificates when you watch. And as Nelly was saying before, the greatest thing about EFL Talks for me is I've actually gotten to meet 85 of my EFL Talkers. Um, fortunately for me, I've been able to travel around and do a lot of congresses and conferences. Oh, why is it loading? I don't know why I'm getting loading document. Okay. Hopefully the picture will come back. But the greatest thing is out of the 120 talkers, I've met 85. I've still got some more to go. and. Okay, I don't know why that happened, but hang on, we'll get back to that slide. It's still loading. Okay. Um, it's been wonderful, you know, meeting Nelly, meeting people face to face, uh, people that I've known for years. Um, I, Nelly, I think Jason and I figured this out. 
I started, I first met Jason, and then I met Nellie through Jason. And I think it's been five years that we've known each other virtually, uh, yet we've only known each other in, in a different world. It's real DFL Talks. Here we are. I still have uh, 35 more EFL talkers to meet, and I'm excited because there's a few events that I know I'm going to in the next three or four months where I'm going to get to meet uh, some more of the speakers. So we hope to have you here someday, and hopefully I'll get to meet you face to face. So what's next for EFL Talks? Well, what I've been working on, um, we have a new page. If you're a teacher, we'd love to have you there. And I'll, I'll talk a little more about how you can all get involved. Oh, thank you. Is that for Mira or for me, Judy? But uh, EFL Talks TD, we have a private teacher development group on Facebook. So if you want, it's a closed group, so we hope you join. Just search for it and ask to be added. And with this, I'm trying to keep it only teachers. So we're looking at some higher level um, teacher development things that are available. So this is separate from the English students. Okay, so join us here. And what I've come out with um, is so we have our first ebook, and it's also available on print on demand. And this is the companion guide. And I believe it was 20 of our EFL talkers, including Judy, who's here, um, submitted uh, basically more information. They gave us uh, posts and articles about their talks to get deeper into the talk. And we put this together to make the first of our companion guides. And what we're doing, remember, I said that EFL Talks is free. And everything that is online is free. It always will be. This is how I want it. Uh, teachers don't have to pay to watch. You don't have to pay to join. You don't have to pay for anything. What we're doing in order to make EFL Talks sustainable, because I'm not going out for corporate sponsorship, is we're selling the EFL Talks Companion Guide. And uh, what they're doing is uh, we're selling this for basically the ebook will make a dollar. And if you do the print on demand book, I think we make $2 on that. Um, on Amazon right now, it depends on where you are in the world. But uh, basically, we're covering the expenses plus $1. And so if you buy this, it's great. There's 22 articles. Um, buy the book, and it'll help support EFL Talks in the future. Next. Next thing that I'm starting to put together now is EFL Talks Business. And we're going to start a separate business thread for business English teachers. And this will be, of course, on the site, but a totally different thread. Because now that I'm involved with the Brass Tiesel Business English SIG and also with the Aya Temple Business English SIG, a lot of these speakers have been doing talks, and we're going to put this on a separate thread. So if you're thinking of making the move over to Business English, then EFL Talks Business will be there for you. Coming up in September, um, we're going to do EFL Talks talks Latin America, <coughs> excuse me, and what we're doing is Elizabeth Ortiz, who's the president of Equitiesel, after we did um, her Equitiesel EFL talks, she came up with the idea of let's do all of Latin America, and so I talked to Gabrielle, and Gabrielle is going to be our keynote speaker. We have 20 speakers, it'll be live, it'll be free. Um, so far, we've got um, half of the countries in Latin America covered, and we also have another guest speaker who we'll talk more about um, soon because we're going to start advertising this in a few weeks. But set the date aside, 
September 10th. We'll be here from Latin America. After that, we're going to have, in October, EFL Talks, Macedonia Thrace, and Northern Greece. And there's our keynote speaker in the top, but we'll start talking about this a little bit more in September. And for the future, uh, we're already planning for next year um, with Belta and John Arnold out of Belgium. We're going to be doing Belta and Europe, where we'll have teachers from all over Europe and teachers from Belgium involved in this EFL talk. And in the future, we've already been talking with the Netherlands uh, later on in next year. Uh, Poland, I've got this almost ready to go, and the UK. So we'll be having more live events, but for specific markets. And in the meantime, what we're doing is EFL talkers have been recording, and I do this all the time, and we're adding more and more videos to the site. And I just have to keep up and start featuring them again, which will be starting soon. Because what we're working on now is building the teacher's video glossary. And this is what I've been working on for the past year. It's kind of my dream. Because, you know, we have plenty of glossaries out there, plenty of dictionaries. And, but I wanted something with terminology. And the whole idea behind this is, let's say you're an up-and-coming teacher or a brand-new teacher, and you hear the term scaffolding. I was very surprised to find out that in Morocco, teachers that are in their third year and graduating from university as teachers have never heard the term scaffolding. <clears throat> Excuse me. So what we want to do is videos using the terms. So a new teacher can type in scaffolding, and all the related videos will come up for them. <clears throat> Excuse me. So we're working on what terms do new teachers need to know and the things that we take for granted. You know, you have all these new terminologies that are coming out all the time. Uh, you, now everybody's talking about formulaic uh, phrases, formulaic chunks, and these are the terms that we're doing recordings on now. So people are defining the terms, talking about when, why, and how you use the term. And the idea is to get them started. And we're building up a database. Um, if you're interested, contact me. I'll send you the link so you can put in what you're interested in discussing. And we have this on a Google Doc. And then what we're doing is while we're building this, I will be posting to the Facebook page. We have our feature of the week, which I haven't done in a few months because I've been traveling so much. But every week we're featuring a different video. So you can share this with everybody. And the other exciting thing is I've been talking and trying to sell this for a while, but EFL talks on the road. Uh, the good news is we will be doing our first live EFL Talks next July as part of Live. So if you're interested, talk to me and I'd love to come to your conference and we'll add this in as part of your conference. Uh, but we need your help. You know, we need to spread the word. Remember, we don't have money behind this. We don't have the publishers behind this. And I really don't want to have them behind this. Um, this is teachers. It's us. It's us getting together and doing something good for the future of education. And I want it to stay that way. But I need you guys to help um, join. Spread the word. Tell other teachers about it. 
get people watching the videos and get people talking about it. Uh, a funny thing actually happened to me when I was in uh, northern Greece for the Macedonia Thrace, northern Greece. I was sitting down talking with Christina, um, who is from Greece, and she's one of our film talkers. And a friend of hers sat down and talked. And she started talking about how she heard this wonderful site that's having recordings and it's on the internet and this free 10 minute talks and videos for people to learn about CPD. And Christine and I just sat there laughing because she didn't realize it was EFL talks and it was me. So we're getting the word out there, but I want to spread it even more. There's millions of teachers out there we still need to reach. So help us spread the word. Tell the teachers that you know, um, all the teachers you work with, get them to go to the site. And even better yet, if you're not one yet, we want you to become an EFL talker. Um, I want this to keep growing. Anybody and everybody is welcome to be an EFL talker. All you have to do, you can email me, submit an idea, you know, submit a talk. If you've already done a live talk and have some recordings, you know, send me a link and I'll take a look at it and we'll talk about it. And, you know, if you need help, we'll even give you training. We'll help you to become an EFL talker for free. Okay. So we want you to become part of this. So join us. Um, we hope that it's the fastest growing PNL plus in the world and it's coming from teachers so we want you to be part of us um let's see i don't know nelly if you could there's two videos there i don't see any link for them for me to start if you could start the sampler that would be great Uh, Rob? Yep. I, I I try to look for them. Um, mm -hmm. I, they, you know, it's supposed to be in the library. Maybe you can help figure this out. It, ah, the media yep. player. Okay, there, I found them. Do you see them Done. under media player? Uh, let me check. Do, 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 do. I don't know. Which one do you want? The first, I don't know. I'll just yeah, pull this one up. A sampler and one says Jerry. Is that one? Either one is fine. Okay. Great. Thank you. And when we're talking about a chunk or chunking in a language context, we're talking about um, grouping bits of language together into larger units. And that can make for ease of comprehension as opposed to breaking down um, words in, or sentences into their individual words one at a time. But the teachers have more control over it. It is teacher-centered, okay? It's individually accounted for, okay? So each individual accounted for their work. It is focused on social skills, okay? But it's a process that takes a set of processes to teach students how to work in a group. Sequences is actually something that we can delve into the classroom setting and explore a lot of the um, clauses and phrases with our students. So basically, um, what do I mean by formulaic sequences? Here are the rules for brainstorming. And beside rules, I put anti-rules because in a sense, uh, they're non-rules. They're, they're meant to free you up and, and allow all the ideas to flow. There's no criticism of ideas. You don't want to start critiquing during the brainstorming stage because you want to generate as many ideas as possible and if you start criticizing if it's in a group of course some people are going to clam up because they, they don't want to say anything because they're going to be laughed at or criticized. Hopefully you've used warm-up activities before um, but maybe you didn't really think about why teachers should use them. So first of all a warm-up it's a quick activity. It's about five minutes uh, used at the beginning of a class. There is around 60 sovereign states in the world which have English as an official language. English is also the de facto official language of the EU. And it's almost the official language of science and international business. 
while there are about 400 million native English speakers in the world, most people who use English are actually non-native speakers. Understanding the term podcast. Firstly, the dictionary meaning is always a good starting point. And here the Oxford Dictionary defines podcast as a digital audio file made available on the internet for downloading to a computer Hi there, my name is David Petrie and I'm honoured to be part of this latest series of EFL Talks. My thanks to the EFL Talks community and to Rob Howard for inviting me along. Uh, today the topic I've been asked to talk to you about is assessment and there's quite a lot to pack into quite a short time, so let's begin. Uh, hello, I'm Effie Drew, I'm very happy to be here and uh, I'm going to talk about the kinesthetic learning curve. <coughs> Then down for terms, uh, which is a bigger glossary. It's a great idea. Rob, thank you very much for that. Uh, then, of course, there's game addiction. Children are more self-absorbed and narcissistic than ever before. Um, we, we know that there was MRI scans done on children. They found that children who play 10, 10 hours of games a day have less developed frontal lobal regions for, ten, for, for reasoning skills than children who play play two hours a day. Why am I referring to this vegetable anyway? So this is actually a fun way to make an acronym and to remember the initial. And I'm going to talk about the initials uh, separately, but let's begin first with the course. Discuss is whether we should use them at all. Isn't using songs in the classroom just a fad? Isn't it passe? After all, it's all about the moving image now nowadays, isn't it? And if we do use them, um, shouldn't we just pick songs the students will like? Well, the answer to all the questions, all these questions, I believe, is no. Songs, and crucially the lyrics within them, are uh, a meaningful, powerful, motivational, highly usable. One of the earliest terms that was used to denote dyslexia was strephosymbolia. I'm sure that the doctor that came up with this was very pleased with himself, showing off his grief. I'm going to be talking about using projects in a meaningful way in the classroom. Uh, I have been using projects uh, formally at school, at uh, the school where I work, for uh, six or seven years. Great, that gives you an idea. Um, you just put together a little sample. Remember, we have over 200 videos now on all different subjects. And I just wanted to give you a little flavor, a little taste of all the different subjects and everything that we did. Oh, thanks so much. And now, if um, do you have the other video? Nelly, is the other one? Yeah, yes, I do. Yes, of course. Uh, it's under media, in case you want. Oh, so, okay, so I think I did the first one, so, so minutes, this should be the second one? Yes. Yep. Figures, you may have seen it. If you come out of Hidden Figures, you've got a smile on your face. It's about women of color who work for the NASA space program in the United States and whose stories up until now have been hidden, hence Hidden Figures. And, of course, it's also called Hidden Figures because they were mathematicians. The actresses left to right are portraying the woman who became the first ever woman of color who is a space engineer, the woman in the middle was the mathematician who worked out how to get people back onto Earth through re-entry through mathematics. And the woman on the right was the first uh, woman of color who was a supervisor at NASA. NASA, NASA. Uh, and the woman in the middle is called Katherine Johnson. And of course, being me, when I'd seen the movie, which I really enjoyed, I Googled her and I found an interview with her. Now, she's 98 years old now, Katherine Johnson, President Obama. Come back, President Obama. Sorry. President Obama gave her a Congressional Medal of Freedom. But when she was... A, a, a young 92 year old she gave an interview which you can see on a program called what matters and in that interview she was talking about teaching i won't bore you with how and she said i don't teach answers she says i give my students a problem and get them to solve it and and it's through solving that they learn she said because when you teach to the test she said and this is going back to isabella's talk earlier and when you teach to the test she said you only teach what that's in what's in the text 
and that short changes the students because you don't teach anything else and it's really wrong. You only teach the test. I give my students problems and help them to solve it. Of course, this isn't a new idea. It's, it's what it, the dichotomy in teaching which has been present all my life and which you all recognize is one between that view, which, which of course Ivan Illich talked about in 1970. Learning is the human activity which least needs manipulation by others. Most learning is not the result of instruction. It's rather the result of unhampered participation in a meaningful setting. That's the kind of thing Sugata Mitra says, where he says, we don't need teachers, we just need people to ask students intelligent questions and put them in little groups around a screen with Google and they can learn by themselves. So in the left, in the left-hand corner of my boxing ring, we have Katrin Johnson, uh, Ivan Ilyich, uh, Sugata Mitra, people like that. Somewhere in the middle, we, this is one of my favorite books, Gary Marcus wrote a book about learning the guitar from zero, from nothing, but he happens to be a cognitive psychologist and he said no, teachers know things, they can motivate students, they can provide incentive, they can impose structure on the learning, they don't just give you a whole guitar and just say learn it, they teach you in little stages and they can of course classically, and that's what the feedback session was all about, that lovely feedback session earlier today, uh, um, um, what, what was the metaphor, it was the, the gift wasn't it, the gift of feedback. Um, teachers can pinpoint errors and target weakness and so on. So that's about in the middle. And then if you go to the right-hand side of, 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 of my little uh, bottom room, the other corner, uh, you have uh, this event from the IFEPL conference in Glasgow this year, 2017, where Jim Scrivener, who's also spoken at Braz Tissot a few times, uh, sort of had a, an encounter with someone called uh, Jocelyn from China. And Jim was talking about how they teach in China, which is transmission. You stand there and you teach and you tell people things and the students listen to you because you're the teacher and that's what happens and that's the end of the story. So we've got a whole sort of the huge dichotomy in my lifetime uh, in teaching, one that I haven't resolved for myself at all, is between a view of teaching which sees which, which sees the teacher as genuinely a facilitator, a provider of opportunities for students to discover and learn, versus at the other extreme, the teacher who stands there and tells you thing about grammar and the present perfect and the third conditional. And believe you me, I've sat in a classroom in Japan and seen a, a teacher lecturing the students in Japanese about post-modification of the noun phrase, and it wasn't at all like the kind of classes I would expect to see uh, by people who are members of uh, Brass TESOL. So what I wondered was, is there a way somewhere in between? And I've got no idea how many minutes I'm doing. I'm panicking about minutes. Was there somewhere in between? Particularly because if you talk to people who've learnt English successfully in a classroom setting, the one thing they always say when you say, how come you learn so successfully? They talk about liking English and loving English and, and, and just being interested in English. And that's what I want to provoke. Um, so here's a little halfway house. And it's a, oh, by the way, uh, uh, my reply to people like Sagata Mitra are these quotes from Ken Robinson. Uh, which this is a slide from a wonderful talk by Sarah Mercer at this year's IFEPL conference. There's no system in the world or any that is better than its teachers. They are the lifeblood of the success of schools. What can we do? Great. Um, this is wonderful for me, um, having Jeremy speak and He's great. He, he did this for 10 minutes, and he was so quick and so fast. But one of the nicest things about this is while I was at um, the IATEFL conference in Glasgow, Jeremy actually came up to me and offered to do an EFL talk. So we're getting there, and people are really starting to follow this. So we want you to join us. Let's see. Let's get back to the slides here. Um, so we hope, go to EFLtalks.com. Yep, we're loading again. And, you know, go to our site. It's EFLtalks.com. If you go to Facebook and type in EFLtalks.com, actually just EFLtalks, you'll find us. Um, we have the EFL Talks TD group. Or even better, I'll wait till this comes up. If you're friends with me or anybody else here with Nelly, there should be a link there. Down. <clears throat> and if you're in any of the countries that we're going to in the near future, we'd love you to be part of it. We'd love you to be part of the video 
glossary. So please do get in touch. If you want to reach me, you can reach me through here. And yes, Judy, Judy does our uh, marketing in the United States and she gives out more cards than I do. And any questions? I'm done talking. Oh, great. Thanks, Christine. Um, yeah, we just started talking. And yeah, the videos really are good. There's a lot of things in there. And I watch.